For 25 years, Connie Schlepp Weisskopf captured the beauty of nature through the art of watercolor. Her career was celebrated in fine art galleries in Europe and America. But one painting in her collection stood out from the others. A depiction of Christ suffering agony in the Garden of Gethsemane. As it turned out, Connie carried secrets deep inside. Secrets known only to God. I was raped at gunpoint five times by a man that um, I had dated in college. And I had broken up with him because he was abusive, of course, after just a few months of dating him. And he broke into my home and raped me. I became pregnant and terminated that child. Violent rape and abortion were the secrets Connie carried as she developed her career in the world of watercolor art. For 25 years, she continued as feelings of pain, anger, and insecurity kept her running from the commitment of a marriage relationship. It was probably 12 years ago, though, that the Lord called me to marry my husband, David. Uh, we had dated years prior, and we had broken up because I gave my life to Christ, and he had not. We were actually living together at the time, and God miraculously uh, worked in my husband's heart, changed his life. She was never, prior to that, ready to get married. But God's been the foundation of this marriage, and that I think he... He brought us together finally. Newly married, Connie and David began to seek God, like many other couples, through regular church attendance. The head of women's ministry at the church that I belong to um, invited us to a banquet for a pregnancy center and never heard of one before, never knew they existed. A woman was giving her testimony um, about terminating a child about abortion. Um, my husband and I had done that before we got married. Um, we never talked about it. We never wanted anyone to know. I never certainly did. Um, and I had never told my husband that I had made that choice prior. Um, for the first time in my life, my husband and I um, began to talk about the choices we had made before we were married. In the parking lot that day, after the banquet, my husband grabbed my hand and said, you know Jesus has forgiven us. And I said, I don't. I don't know that. As a Christian believer, Connie was carrying the agony she had depicted in her painting of the Garden of Gethsemane. She needed help to understand and really believe in her heart that Jesus had carried that pain for her and that she was forgiven. During that course of that time, both Connie and I came upon some uh, health challenges. I was going to the doctor for my, my annual physical. We couldn't do a lot of things because he'd get really tired. He didn't like to ride bikes or do a lot of outings. We do play golf and we fly fish. Um, but it became more evident that he was tired a lot and was diagnosed with a heart condition. She'd had, uh, I think, felt some, some lumps in her, in her breast and so finally convinced her to really to go see a doctor and and they said we needed to do a biopsy and um, they did the biopsy. When I first was diagnosed I'm going to tell you that my friends well-meaning and family well-meaning said this is the time you need to find out everything you know doctors say about breast cancer. Well the Lord spoke to me and said no Connie this is when you need to find out everything I say about healing and Andrew Womack's ministry had a lot of that for me. And on my way home, the Lord spoke to me and said, Connie, you don't even believe me that I've forgiven your sins. How will you believe me for your healing? I'm gonna tell you, I wept in the car that day and said, God, I have done so many horrible things. How can you forgive all of those things? And I was thinking on um, the abortions that I'd done. Um, just all the sinful things. I mean, I'm the, one of the worst sinners out there. Um, God said to me, then I sent my son for nothing. Um, I went home and wept that day, and I'm like, God. I searched every scripture there was on what he did at the cross. 
why he sent his son. Um, Andrew's teachings um, brought me to that as well. I continued to just, um, yeah, read the word, listen, um, the healing scriptures. You've already got it. Uh, God wants you well. Um, he just speaks in such a way that it's just simple truth about this Jesus that I fell in love with. And the more that when I first fell in love with him too, I kept hearing in the word, you know, God has these greater things for you to do that you will be doing even greater things than him. Um, but I wasn't seeing them in the church, you know. I saw a lot of people die. I lost, saw a lot of people um, not getting well. I emailed Andrew's ministry <laughs> and asked them if he could come and pray for me <laughs> because I sought out people who, when they prayed, when they um, spoke, there was fruit. Um, I didn't see a lot of that in other places. And someone graciously emailed me back and said, well, he's a very busy man. Um, but you know what? He is going to be ministering in Colorado Springs this next weekend. I went a couple days early and just spent a lot of time in the Word, listened to the tapes that I had been blessed with from Andrew. Um, I used to just put them on at night and lay in bed and just listen to them, having the Word just go into me, the healing scriptures and that. Um, so I went to that church early the next, on Sunday morning where he was ministering. I went into the sanctuary and sat down and, and was just waiting and then all of a sudden I just felt the Lord's little nudge and said, go out into the lobby now. And, and then ran smack face into Andrew. And oh, there's me. Oh, hi. Okay. So hi. you want to be healed? Yes. Are you ready to receive? I'm ready to receive. Connie is healed in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, that you've done it. We pray. It was a simple prayer. He just said, are you ready to receive your healing? And I was. Um, he simply prayed for me. Um, and then we went in um, and commanded the cancer to leave my body. Um, we went into the sanctuary and the message that day. You believe God for healing. God doesn't respond to you and heal you. The scripture says it by his stripes you were healed 2,000 years ago. By his stripes. That's talking about what happened in Herod's judgment hall when he took those stripes on his back. Jesus isn't healing people today. He healed people 2,000 years ago. All of the power that it takes to heal every sickness and every problem in the human race was generated 2,000 years ago. And then when you get born again, God places that raising from the dead power on the inside of you. It ministered to my heart even more so that um, the healing manifest that day, I believe, that moment when he prayed and when I heard. I didn't have enough faith not to go have the surgery yet um, and didn't believe enough yet. So anyway, I went in for the surgery for my breast cancer. You know, the doctor came back out and talked to the family afterwards and he said he felt really good about the procedure. And they called me the very next day, which is unheard of, and the doctor said to me, Connie, we don't know what happened. All the cancer was gone. I know what happened. <laughs> Jesus healed me. And my husband and I just began to rejoice because we knew what happened, and I told my doctor that. I know what happened. I have this incredible God who has healing, um, and that's what happened. Shortly after that, um, my husband asked me if I would pray for him, for his healing, for his heart, because they basically gave him a death sentence and said, you know, there's nothing more we can do. You just get to go home and die. You have three to five years, probably three. Um, I wanted my husband to live. I wanted him to have this incredible life that we have. Um, so one night he asked me to pray, and it was probably two weeks or so later. One night at dinner, I had started thinking about the fact that I really hadn't felt this uh, fluttering or the, the arrhythmia in my heart for some time. And I ch checked my pulse and because I could feel the, the fluctuations in my pulse. And he kind of had a strange look on his face and I'm like, what's up? I just looked at Connie and said, this is kind of freaky, but my what? pulse is really steady. It's normal. 
loved you. Amen. And immediately I just jumped up and began to just rejoice and thank God for my husband's healing. I went back to this, this other specialist and um, went in, did the EKG and took my chart into him, sat down with him and he looked at him and he goes, these are yours. And I said, yes. And he goes, well, they're normal. I said, I expected that. And he said, why? And you know, I just proceeded to tell him, I'm, I'm healed. I think uh, we don't need to go any further with this. And he said, well, I don't know why that would be, but um, I said, well, I just praise my God for that healing. Um, so now I get to live this awesome life with Jesus and my husband um, because he believed and received all that our Lord has. In discovering the joy of forgiveness and healing, Connie felt God leading her to volunteer at the Life Choices Pregnancy Center in her home community. In 2007, she became the facility's director. I was offered the position as um, center director at the pregnancy center where I was volunteering at. My husband and I prayed because that would be a huge change for us. Um, he was used to, of course, having me at home, um, working at home, and you kind of can set your schedule. So um, dinner was on the table, and he worked very hard at his job. Um, but we both prayed and felt like this is where God wanted me to be, and um, totally felt that peace about it, uh, knowing that now I could share with other women and men because, you know, behind every young woman is a young man and we often have them coming into the center as well. And we get to pray with them and share the gospel with them. How I see her interact with clients and volunteers, she has a gift of grace. She's just um, such an encouragement to me. Yeah. They told me I was pregnant <laughs> and then they also gave me like, just like advice from like the Bible and they just like were really encouraging. What Connie's able to do is to share the nature of God with people that don't understand how really good God is. Many girls have changed their minds that were going to abort their babies. Life Choices, the whole facility has been oh, just amazing. They've been prayer, um, Bible studies, um, helping me make the decision to keep my child. We've had many, many healings at Life Choices now. We've had women healed of breast cancers and hepatitis C, um, emotional healings. We see uh, girls coming to the Lord and we see people that have never been inside a church and have never known really what Jesus has done for us to ask questions and to come back and to find the Lord and that's exciting and that's what we're about. Connie's 25-year career as a watercolor artist has now become a hobby. Her passion and the truly fulfilling moments of her life are found at the Pregnancy Center. <laughs> With no children of her own, she pours her life into the young women who come for help. She's become a brush in the hands of the divine artist and author of life itself, who is painting love and forgiveness, the colors of eternity, on the hearts of these priceless women and children. God's given me this incredible opportunity at Life Choices to share the gospel. Um, he wants us all to be out there, you know, sharing with non-believers as well as believers about the healing power, the authority, the love of Jesus Christ. Um, so we get to do that at Life Choices and what they see speaks more to them about my Jesus than even the words that I can say sometimes. She's more than just a mentor. She's more than just someone who works at Life Choices. She is a true woman of God. She is the best. <laughs> she's living proof. I mean, she's able to say, I know this for a fact, and I'm living proof that God is good and, and his, his word is true. I honestly, truly believe it, that if it wasn't for God and it wasn't for Connie, I would not be here.